Hello and welcome to this Pocasito webinar. Postcard Cities of Tomorrow is a, well, now already six year long prog project that we run at the Ecologic Institute. We had different focus topics in the various years. In the last two years, we focus on the circular economy. And um, my name is Max Grunig. I'm with the Ecologic Institute. And I'm very glad to have here with us today, Nora Griefhahn from Cradle to Cradle, an association in Berlin, in Germany, where I'm also from originally. So we should have crossed paths maybe in the, in the <laughs> past at some point, but we haven't. And now we are on different sides of the Atlantic, but it's so great with technology, we can still talk as if we're in one room. Um, very happy to have you here today with us. Uh, very interested also to hear about um, your association and what you do. Um, Circular economy is still a relatively new concept and topic in the United States. It's a very, you know, uh, it's it's starting, but it's really just starting. So we really need to learn a lot, but we should also see what maybe uh, we can bring to Europe from the United States. And as always, we have people here with us in the room um, participating uh, in front of their computers or tablets or telephones. And as always, we want to encourage you to ask questions later. So you have three ways to do this. You can either raise your hand, uh, you can type in a question in the question pane, or you can also type in your questions in the chat function. I will try to monitor this. If I don't see you uh, and if I forget you, don't worry. You can also stay in touch after the webinar and contact Nora or me directly and we will do uh, what we can to answer as many questions as possible in the short time. So in order to not waste any more of that time, I'm going to be quiet now and hand over to Nora. Nora, thank you so much for taking time to join us here today and for talking to us about Cradle to Cradle. Look. Yes, hello everyone uh, and thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm Nora Griefen and Executive Director of the Cradle to Cradle Association based in Berlin. And I will uh, have the next um, half an hour to tell you a little bit about our work and what Cradle to Cradle is. So at the Cradle to Cradle Association, we work on education and uh, connecting people in terms of Cradle to Cradle. And with Cradle to Cradle, we think that we can be yeah, more than just people who are leaving a negative impact, but yeah, leaving a positive and big footprint and having positive impact with that. Um, why are we talking about cradle to cradle? Um, actually, right now our uh, society is working with the cradle to grave paradigm. So we produce something, we make something out of it, and at the end, there's always waste. Um, and with this kind of um, um, economy, we are losing materials every day. And so we have to shift from a cradle to grave paradigm to a cradle to cradle paradigm, where we are using all the materials that we um, have again and where we're designing them from the beginning that they will not become waste. Because uh, waste is a paradigm that is just made up in our minds and it's a human-made par paradigm. Because actually in nature there is no waste and no need for waste. If we look at our resources then, then we see that we are losing a lot of resources every day and that our resources are scarce um, scarcing and so we do not have um, resources uh, endlessly. So for example looking at indium we see that there are only 13 years left of using indium but if we are using it in, in a way like uh, um, half uh, of if half of an American uh, does then we would only have four years left so uh, looking at that, we see if our population is growing and we have more and more people consuming more products, then we have e even more the 
need for designing them in a way that the material is not lost at the end. And we are losing uh, humus and our um, uh, soil every day. So we are right now, everyone is talking about climate change and about the problems that we have with uh, CO2 in the atmosphere, but actually it's not a problem of CO of carbon. It's a problem of how we are managing our carbon. And so we need to capture our carbon in the soil and we need to also there uh, figure out ways how to use carbon in uh, circles and not losing it. So not taking it from the ground and at the end polluting it in the air. We have problems with uh, plastics and uh, a lot of trash that we have all over the world. We can see it's uh, not, it's a problem that's not biodegradable. So of course we need to figure out what to do that we are not polluting our uh, earth systems and that we are actually losing the place to live. Um, a lot of you probably have heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's a it's a patch in in the um, uh, in the ocean that is twice the size of Texas, and uh, this is huge and it has a concentration that is eight times higher um, than the concentration that we have in on plankton uh, plankton at these places. So actually animals are eating these um, plastic concentrations uh, thinking that this would be um, food and then they are uh, starving, uh, starving even with um, yeah, a full stomach. So it's about defining quality and defining how we want our materials to be. It's not about only forbidding um, yeah, certain material because for example, asbestos was a material that was uh, forbidden. And now here in this cartel, you find antimon sulfides. These are more, even more uh, carcinogen than asbestos. And now it's in there because we just forbid, uh, for have, we just have forbidden asbestos. So it's about defining quality. You can find that with the euro as well. I mean, there are people who don't like the euro coins, but probably most of them not, don't know that you should not like it because it's uh, also a toxic material. It has a lot of nickel in there and 10% of the Western population is sensitive to nickel. So uh, we should also define our product and if we have a coin in our hand, then it has to be defined and made in a way that you can hold it in your hand. Um, of course, it's also important that we don't start upcycling these materials now that are never made for a way you know, on, that are never made for wearing them, for example, on our skin or having them in our room and having 500 toxic chemicals with us. Um, so defining them from the beginning and not thinking about what kind, what we can do with this waste. It's how we see us on this earth. Right now, the society talks about us as being a par parasite. And of course, if we're only polluting the planet, this does not work. But is it really uh, our goal? and our aim to have zero emission, because zero emission would only mean that we are not existing. And it would only mean that, yeah, it's not good that this little child here in the middle that you can see uh, is there. So right now we are always talking about, uh, yeah, having a positive impact on economy. We are also talking about social aspects. But when we come to ecology, we are only talking about reducing our footprint. And actually, this has to stop. We have to come to a triple top line where we actually maximize our footprint, but having a positive footprint for there. So 
we need to question the concept of us human beings on this earth. And actually having the concept cradle to grave takes us to being passed on this planet. But why can't we be contributors? And as contributors, we can use industrial metabolisms uh, like nature metabolisms and go from cradle to grave to cradle to cradle. We are not too many. If, you, if we see that the biomass of ants, for example, is four times higher than the biomass of us on this planet, then we see that there are so many animals who have uh, are a lot of more um, of their species and have a lot of uh, more biomass. So actually it's important, not about how many we are, but how stupid we are. And we need to start being clever and not stupid anymore. So we can come from past to contributor and we can come there by using the cradle to cradle school of thought and having a mind where we try to, to have a having a positive impact with everything we do and having a positive footprint with our uh, production and having this in mind. So working with a total different mindset, getting out of the box, out of that, what we are doing right now and starting from a different uh, standpoint. So coming with the school of thought, we can go with the design concept and the cradle to cradle mm -hmm. design concept means that we can produce things in a totally different way. We can use the cradle to cradle principles that are uh, waste equals food, using regenerative energy and celebrating diversity. And with these principles in mind, of course, we can um, then uh, yeah, look at uh, our, uh, at our um, economy in a total different way. What do we mean when we talk about race equals food? We think that actually we can talk about food is equals food because there is no waste. In nature, there is no waste. We can question the concept of waste in general because why, why does there have to be waste? And we can see nature as a role model and see how ecological metabolisms work. And when we use these um, metabolism as role models, then we see there does not have to be any waste. Because if you look at a cherry tree, for example, there is no waste. A cherry tree is producing a lot of blossoms and they are actually not really efficient. Actually, they, uh, there are way too many blossoms, if you would say, as an engineer, because you, they are not producing as many cherries. But actually, all these blossoms are not becoming waste. They become uh, beneficial for something else. They become absorbent for CO2. They produce oxygen. They produce biomass. It supports the biodiversity around, it creates space for living and filters the air, it produces soil. So it's effective and beneficial and not only less bad. And there's no waste. So let's think about how we can be eco-effective and how we can optimize our positive impact and not only reduce our ne negative impacts. Of course, we have to do that in the tra transition where we are right now in as well. But we cannot focus on having the aim of zero emission. We have to focus on positive impact. And on a goal, we have to have positive impact. And on our way there, of course, we reduce our negative impact and we recycle. And, and for having a positive impact, we need to rethink, reuse, and upcycle and improve the quality. For that, we need to use um, biological and technical cycles. And that means that we are producing products in a way that they can go in, in the biosphere or in the technosphere. The biosphere is for products of consumption. So for example, my shampoo, but also the, um, my, the sole of my shoe 
all these materials that are um, used and co consumed during um, uh, yeah during the usage phase, where, wherever particles of the product um, come to the uh, environment afterward, always then they have to be made in a way that they can go into the biosphere and that they are biodegradable and become uh, biological nutrients. But if we are only using materials and using a product, then of course this product can go into the technosphere. And an example could be my washing machine that I'm using and it is not um, yeah, becoming waste at the end, but it, it can become um, material, technical nutrient for something else. And so I can design this washing machine in a way that I can take every part easily away, um, disassemble every part, and then t make something new out of it. So designing from the beginning, starting with um, a different design perspective on how I uh, produce this material, and then it, there does not have to be any waste anymore. So designing for innovation, products that are healthy, good for people and the environment, and defining them and not having a like free of something products, but defining positive materials. And that's really important because then it's possible to have a beneficial footprint and have an eco-effective design. We need to think about how we can really close these loops and that can possible, possibly um, happen if we are using service concept. So why do I have to buy a washing machine? I just want to wash my clothes at home. So of course I can buy 2000 times washing and wash at my place at home, but having the company owning the machine and owning the materials. And then it becomes um, easier for the company to actually produce this machine, not in the cheapest way, but in a way where I can easily disassemble it and um, get all the materials back and make something new out of it. And then also there's a pers perspective that the company is interested in having the most efficient um, and effective machine because it knows that it will use the materials again and not only using the cheapest ones. <coughs> so materials um, and can be um, buildings or uh, products can be material banks and we can actually only use these materials at one point and putting them on, on some place and putting them on an, a different place at some other time. So if we are using these materials, of course we need digital metabolisms and we need material passports. And there the digitalization will help us a lot because we will know where the materials come from and we will have um, material tracks and we will have passports of, for example, buildings where we actually know every product that is used uh, and every material that is used. And the digitalization will only happen if we know our materials, because what do you want to um, digitalize if we don't know our material, if, if we don't define them? There's a lot going on. Uh, in critical science, different universities work on that. There's a, 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 um, yeah, a education and also science projects working on this field and on different topics of that. There's a certification on Cradle to Cradle as well, where they try to define how a Cradle to Cradle pro product could look like and having five different categories um, in, in which they are certifying their products. Um, and it's a um, quite holistic uh, certification, uh, which can help marketing 
um, yeah, how products uh, are made in a cradle to cradle way. There are already a lot of products produced uh, in all kinds of different ways. And um, yeah, you can see from from the toilet paper to um, yeah, to the building materials, there are all kind of different products made in a way that they are made um, cradle to cradle. And even uh, and either way, they are made for biological or for technical cycles. There's printing um, that is actually made for the environment. So printing that is made in a way that there's no um, toxic material in, anymore and that actually at the end the paper can go back into the environment where it comes uh, from and and actually i mean uh, right now we have 40 percent of um uh 40 percent of our paper uh, recycling is toxic sludge and it's not made for recycling anymore so it has to start at the beginning then we can actually produce paper and toilet paper and all kind of uh, kinds of materials afterwards and we can then of course use the material in cascades and not putting it uh, on the compost for uh, after using it once but at the end the material has to go back into the environment because it comes from the environment there's leather tanning that is made without chrome there are a lot of different buildings built in a way that they are producing positive impact so they are cleaning the air they are made in a way that they are um, actually yeah helping um, the water to uh, water to clean or they produce yeah a lot of different positive impacts and they are material banks and the material is used again so it's also a business case and it's worth um, looking at these perspectives, not only on a, um, yeah, not only in a way that you can say, okay, this is good for the environment or this is something sustainable, but it's um, a business case as well. There's transfer to different other communities where, um, yeah, whole municipalities say, now we want to become creative creative municipality and start building in a way, but also transferring it to different parts of the community. Um, yeah, there are roof tops, for example, here in the US, where you can at, at once uh, start having a place where people really want to come, even if they don't have to work. Um, there is a project in, in Bel uh, Belgium where they have the biggest farm um, on uh, on on buildings and where they produce their um, yeah their food for the local uh, for the locals. There are other buildings um, uh, all over um, the world, but also, for example, here in Germany, a, a building is made um, in in Berlin as well. There is. Um, uh, a building, uh, a park um, for uh, for a business park uh, made in a cradle to cradle way and it's uh, based close to Amsterdam, Park 2020. There's a wood, wood cube and other wooden buildings that are made in a way that you can easily disassemble it, but also having a healthy living environment for that. Um, so having buildings that are made in a way that they are like a tree and having cities like a forest. Um, of course, also big companies like Wood starting to now fi figuring out how to implement these ideas in their philosophy as well. Um, they're big, um, yeah, innovations already happened over 10 years ago, for example, the company here um, started to produce the first shirt that is actually made for wearing it on our, on our skin. And then you're like, what? Uh, of course, um, clothes is made for wearing it on our skin, but no, 
uh, a lot of times it's not. And even if you're using organic cotton, then there's a lot of colors and different materials used that actually make uh, these material toxic for our skin. And so, of course, we need to design a, a shirt that is made for wearing it on our skin. And then at the end, that means that you can also bring it back to the environment. Um, now, bigger companies are following, and uh, so this can go into mass markets as well, and CNA, but also Lidl and other different uh, companies started to now um, yeah, go on this way as well. There are shoes made in a way that they can go into biological cycles, writing supply, uh, in office, um, uh, yeah, furnitures, we have found a lot of different companies who are willing to go on a way that you, they produce in a way that you can really easily disassemble the material and then um, taking it back uh, into the cycle and optimize your product for that. Um, there are carpets that are cleaning there, so they are not having only less negative impact because they don't smell or they don't make the building sick but they also help the building and they help by absorbing um, fine dust and then cleaning the air with that um, also of course they are not toxic and they are made in a way that they can easily go back into cycles <coughs> in packaging their um, companies now starting to uh, yeah pr produce materials in a way that you can actually um, yeah take them back and in textile there are also companies starting to produce um, materials that are made for biological spheres but can first go into technical spheres by actually using these materials again and are more strong in a way than having a cotton used in this way. There's a lot of concepts and confusion. Um, uh, yeah, sustainability, everyone knows this words, but nobody knows what, what this actually means. And um, yeah, some people say it's, it's sustainable if you have uh, some good sustainability reporting at your company and the other ones have um, bigger in mind. So this is kind of confusing for everyone. Then there's waste management and everyone now is talking about waste management as, uh, as being um, something that's circular economy now. But actually a lot of times also these types um, start at the end and not at the beginning. So we need a real circular economy and to get there, of course, we need to start at the design phase and though for go from cradle to cradle because otherwise we will have toxic materials in cycles and that will bring us to a point where we will have um, even yeah, a toxic linear economy in cycles, but no real circular economy. So let's do this and to really bring this idea um, into society. We have founded the Cradle to Cradle Association. We are doing education and networking. We are having a lot of different um, people and initiatives. For example, we have over 700 volunteers who are working with us and implementing Cradle to Cradle in their, um, yes, in, in their regions. Uh, we are doing a big Congress where we i uh, like to invite all of you every year um, with 1,000 participants here in Berlin. Um, we have uh, a different events and um, uh, publications and we work with um, yeah, different stakeholders to bring Cradle to Cradle into society. Um, and now we uh, thought, okay, there are a lot of buildings like this one in Fenlo where you can find new innovative buildings that are made in the cradle to cradle way but there are also a lot of old buildings like this one which are never made in a way that are a cradle to cradle and they are also were never designed in this way but they're there now 
and they have a lot of toxic materials in there, but what do you want to do with them? 60% of our waste comes from the building sector. So just turning all these buildings down and building them new um, is not always the possibility. So we uh, founded the Cradle to Cradle Lab where we will, uh, where we have an education center, an NGO office, and a place for a real world laboratory where we can actually, yeah, test all these different materials that are already there. And we founded this old building uh, from the old um, Eastern German time, and yeah, it looked really not like a place where someone would like to work or um, it. Yeah, it was an old um, pharmacy in there. And um, yeah, this was a building that was not credit to credit at all. But we decided to show that you can go into old buildings and make something positive out of it. And this is how it looks now. It's a place where people can come and where they can see and um, feel what this could mean, where they can, um, yeah, also meet people where they can also find ideas how we maybe have to think uh, things in a total different way and um, how we can define materials and yeah making it in a totally different way so this is how it looks now and yeah I'm happy to invite all of you uh, to feel what this means and feel that credit to credit um, it's already possible and it's not something new. Um, yes, and for that, um, thank you for listening to me and I am happy for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nora. This was very, very interesting. I have to say from a personal point of view, the carpeting, that self-cleaning, that seemed very, very interesting. Uh, but of course, the whole mindset, I mean, you talked about it. It's about a shift in mindset. And I imagine that um, even though you have a lot of company examples and a lot of very positive examples already, a lot needs to be done in training and education so that engineering students and business students, they think that way right away when they come out of the universities. Um, that's something... How are you active there? Is that something you're working on? Um, yes, of course we are. Uh, for, uh, yeah, for me, for example, I'm also a um, teacher at the Technical University here in Berlin, but there, um, that's only one point of the puzzle, but we are, as an NGO, we are working on bringing these ideas into society. So we have the Cradle to Cradle Congress, where people can come and they're, they're people from all different parts of the community. So people from, um, yeah, from, uh, from, from companies, but from science and from society, they all come together to uh, think about how we can have this uh, yeah, shift in society and to uh, also celebrate uh, the innovations that are already there. But we also have um, yeah, a lot of different other um, projects where we actually do educational work and where people can come to us. We have seminars, we have trainings, and so people who want to learn about Credit to Credit um, can come to us. And that's uh, actually where we think we need to start by uh, actually bringing this idea into the mind of the people, because right now everyone is talking about, okay, there's uh, there are huge problems, but it's not only problems there are also solutions and we need to show how these solutions are and they are not, um, it's not a solution to only being a less, a little bit less bad, but it's a solution to really shift our impact. Yes, thank you. And, and I, I like this when you started out, it's not about zero emissions. Yeah. It's about changing from this linear, um, cradle to grave to cradle to cradle yes and i mean this is uh, really important because right now everyone is talking about circular economy and then 
okay, there's a circular economy package from the EU and people are starting to um, think, okay, then, okay, what should we do with this waste? But this is too late to start at the point of the waste and starting um, at the end and then thinking about what, what we can do with that because then it's still a linear economy but we are maybe having some circles in between but at the end there will be trash and so if we're not designing from from the beginning in a way that this product is made for going into a circular economy then there will be no circular economy and we are losing this material at the end either way and also i mean one one point for that is as well if we are uh, having toxic materials in circles then we will also accumulate these toxic substances and this will also actually have other problems that will come with that as well wonderful we do have questions from the audience and with that I wanted to also um, repeat that you're all invited to ask questions or make follow-up comments, etc. You just have to signal this. And we have a uh, first uh, question coming from Shireen. Uh, I hope you can ask a question yourself. Are you there? Yes, hi. Thank you, Nora. This was so great and wonderful to hear this. Um, and I think my question is that basically, maybe I'm being naive, but this is such a good idea that I don't understand why this is not happening more on a larger scale, because I'm wondering what are the main obstacles in addition to cost? I know a lot of times when I myself am shopping for products that are more environmentally friendly, they don't compare, they don't compete in cost in the US with the cheaper made products that you don't even know what's in them. Um, and so my, my other issue is that it seems like a business creating products should be motivated to design products without waste because waste equals an inefficiency and inefficiency wastes money. So as a business, wouldn't they be motivated to do this in the first place? Yeah. But I know in, yeah. in the US, the problem is getting the materials back to the company. Yes, uh, you're, you're totally right. Actually, I mean, and a lot of times the problem is that people are doing things because they have always done it in a way and they have been like that for like 100 years now so why should we shift them because actually a lot of our way how we are producing products is not um yeah on a business uh, perspective it's not um, effective and it's actually uh, would cost much less if we're if we would do it in a different way and um, for example this um, building in Fenlo has uh, a, a good um, yeah, business case for that and they also have written it down so you can find it online as well they for example um, figured out if they are using uh, 3,000 uh, 3 million euros more for having cradle to cradle implemented there then in a time of 40 years where they are using this building, they will have uh, 16 million um, uh, euros um, uh, um, uh, reduction of their cost uh, during this usage phase. So actually this makes sense in the, in the business case a lot, but uh, if you are only building a building to sell it next year in it, uh, then it does not make sense for you to have three million more um, costs. But if we are, if you are having it um, for a longer perspective, like this uh, municipality does, then of course it makes a lot of sense uh, to actually have this 16 million at the end. Um, and so I think a huge problem that we have is that a lot of companies are made in a way that we are only looking on um, yeah, short term advantages and not on how we actually yeah, can make a business case out of that for a long time and how, how we get um, yeah, the, uh, this uh, advantages for a long time. And also, even uh, if we have um, smaller products a lot of times companies put their innovation costs in 
the product, even if the product at the end is actually cheaper than having this old cheap product that you had before. Um, so of course we need also um, yeah, reg regulations and um, maybe uh, yeah, per perspectives how we can help these companies to not putting their innovation costs into their product because it's a lot of times that makes no sense and then nobody will buy it even um, even the, the product would be cheaper. So actually there is also a huge need for different business cases because there was for example this TV and it was sell, uh, sold as, um, as an eco TV and so it was 200 euros more than um, a comparable TV would have costs. It, make, it made totally no sense to sell it 200 euros more because it's not, it was not more expensive to build this TV. And actually, if the company would, on, would have only said, mm, we want the savings from your energy, then they would have gotten much more money and they could have uh, sold this product in a different business case. So it's not working with our old business models to have these new innovation products because then they cannot compete. But if we um, yeah, have different uh, types of business models, then they will compete much better. And uh, just a brief follow up on this, Nora, are there different businesses that are maybe better or worse for this? For example, are startups more open or small and medium sized companies or very large ones? Yeah, I would say this, the medium sized ones are most of time, most of the time, the most innovative ones because they actually have already um, a bit of, um, they have money for inventing something new but they also um, have the perspective on looking on uh, longer terms most of the time. Of, of, uh, a lot of times like family driven companies are having this perspective as well and not companies that are only yeah, working for their shareholders and for the, um, yeah, the money they have to make in the next short half a year. Great, excellent. So we do have another question coming from the audience, this time from Louisa Freeman. Louisa, I have unmuted you, but it seems you're still muted on your end. So oh, yeah, here we now go. it looks good. Here we Beautiful. Go. Thank, you. Thank you, Max. Hi, Nora. Thank you for your presentation. Um, so I work in reusable packaging and a reusable packaging startup called Fraternity. And we work mostly with inherently circular businesses because it's easiest for them to incorporate reusables into their cir uh, circular shipping models. Um, but we've come to recognize that using reusables in standard e-commerce like Walmart um, or even Amazon uh, is really hard because there's just no system in place for companies to cheaply, conveniently recollect or re-aggregate their packaging. Um, mm -hmm. So what would Cradle to Cradle recommend um, to standard e-commerce companies um, in the use in, in terms of using reusables? Yeah, I think of course uh, you're right. It's uh, quite of difficult to get these material effects. So Cradle to Cradle would always say you need to figure out the right material for the right usage scenario. Because uh, in our perspective, we would not say that every time you need for all usage scenarios, you would need um, reusable, for example. It, it depends where actually the material ends and how you actually have this logistic waste. And so in some scenarios, you could also say maybe it's better to have um, material that is only single use, but for example, made in a way that you can bring it back into biological cycles and then you don't have to collect it uh, and bring it back to ship it back to wherever it comes from but actually having these scenarios so um for of course in some points it makes sense to use materials in a way that you can use them again but it depends on the usage scenario and i would not always say that uh, reusing material is always the um, perspective to go on. 
Sure, thank you. And to a little bit follow up on this, so Nora, I, I'm really surprised because usually I talk to people, especially in the environment community, and they say, well, you should always reuse and that's always better. And But of course, we also hear, for example, glass bottles that are reused, they're getting less environmentally advantages once the distance gets longer. And now what you say sounds a little bit similar, but what's your general, or do you have a general opinion about online commerce, about um, buying things uh, on the internet? Is there is this good or is this bad or is there a way to make it i would say you could not say this is good or this is bad it's always it depends and that's what you would probably always say with cradle to cradle so it depends also there what is the scenario i mean if you're living in a city where you can buy everything right close to you maybe then it makes more sense to go there but if you actually have uh, if you actually take the car to go uh, 50 kilometers to a different place to buy something, maybe the having it um, shipped by 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 post makes more sense. So I would also say it depends there, and um, it also it always depends what kind of material you use and where you're getting it from. And sometimes it makes also sense. To, um, to use materials in a way that you can have uh, your cycles in a local uh, place, but but not always. I would also say also there it depends where um, yeah where these materials come from and where you can actually bring them. And we need to actually I think step one uh, one way back and think about how we can figure out our society and closing um, these loops in a much bigger way than only uh, having these short term um, answers. Well, this sounds really great and really exciting to, to say we need to have a more systemic view, more uh, holistic approach in, in, instead of looking at one product and one use case more, how do we make our life circular in a way. Uh, I want to say before we get to the very end of the webinar, if you do have questions, ask them now because later it will be too late to do it on, <laughs> on the show. So now you still have the opportunity if you raise your hand, otherwise we'll, we'll do that later maybe online. I wanted to also plug, we'll have an online forum on LinkedIn called Pocasito very simply. We can also join first and then post your questions. Nora, and of, course, um, of course, you can, can also contact us um, as Cradle to Cradle Association and we are happy to get in contact with you at the end as well. Great. And you mentioned your conference and uh, that we are all invited. Will you, <laughs> will you live stream the conference or do we have to come to Berlin for that? Um, I, I, there will be live streams as well, and there will be um, the possibility to watch the content afterward as well. Uh, you can watch all the contents of the last conferences um, from the last years as well uh, on our YouTube channel. But actually, I also think it's uh, important to bring the Cradle to Cradle community together and to have people to um, yeah, get to know each other and to make connections and of course therefore it's uh, needed to to be there because then you can actually exchange with uh, people in this case and there are so many people working on this but actually they need to work together and I think we will only have this shift if we get people to strengthen together and to work together and so Therefore, I also think it's uh, important to meet these people in, in person. We'll try that. So remind <laughs> yeah. us, when, when is the conference exactly? Yeah, the conference is on the uh, 31st uh, of January and the 1st of February. So it's a two days conference um, and it's here in Berlin. And uh, yeah, you will have uh, people there, for example, uh, the German Minister for Environment uh, will be there, but 
also people from companies like Carlsberg who are uh, talking about how they actually implement cradle to cradle in their packaging um, sector. And uh, so we will have all different um, kind of people there talking about how to implement cradle to cradle in their company or in politics or in uh, their different topics. And so uh, I think that will be really interesting and there will be um, a lot to learn. Excellent. So we're mm -hmm. all invited. We'll all try to come. And uh, of course, if we can join, we'll try to watch the online streaming. And, uh, and of course, we should also try to see if we can, you know, take up some of the examples that you've shown us here in the webinar. Um, maybe try to get some companies to move in that direction in the U.S. and elsewhere. Um, but also you mentioned cities. Cities are also an important yeah. uh, catalyst. Do, do you work also locally with the city of Berlin? Yes. Uh, for example, like here in Berlin, we, are, we, we worked uh, on this Cradle to Cradle app so that people can really come here and see what's already possible. And the senator uh, for building um, sector in Berlin is also, yeah, quite interested in this topic and working with us. But um, I mean, Berlin is not the only place where this is important. And so they, we are working on a network of municipalities working on cradle to cradle and um, becoming cradle to cradle uh, model municipalities and model regions. So to bring these uh, yeah, ideas into the uh, different cities and municipalities and having a shift there where actually uh, people are living, people are uh, having education and also um, where a lot of buildings are built and so uh, bring, yeah, to have threatening these ideas. And just between us, can you say, is there any city that's very advanced or a region or a cluster of cities or even a country where you say they're really ahead of I mean, there are a lot of uh, cities now joining this movement and starting. Uh, probably the city of Fenlo is the most uh, front runner who has already started having their, um, yeah, their city hall, but also schools and different buildings built in a way, uh, in a cradle to cradle way. And maybe the people in, in the Netherlands are also a little bit more yeah, innovative. They, they just start and they don't think about, okay, what is the problem and how, what could also, also be a problem not to start. But I mean, in the US, you also have um, uh, the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute in uh, California, uh, where there is this Cradle to Cradle certification and there are a lot of uh, people also working on this topic. Uh, over there so um yeah you you find these people all over the world and you find uh um countries uh, that are working with with that but also uh, cities and um taiwan has uh, implemented cradle to cradle ideas and also different regions so um yeah we now have to figure out how to yeah actually maybe communicate as well that this is not only um one more sustainability idea but something how we can actually really answer have an answer of all these problems great we have one more question coming from linda i hope linda can ask her question herself okay can you hear me yes Great. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm Linda Keene. I met you in Milwaukee. Um, I direct a K-12 um, e-learningnext.cc EchoWeb to introduce these ideas to children. And I'm wondering what educational institutions you are aware of in the EU or in the U.S. who are working with young children to make this just how they begin their life. Because I think this is a huge population, sometimes even larger than the adult population. <laughs> and once they understand it, it makes it really easy for them to um, to bring it into their life. Yes, that's uh, true. We have some um, some 
um, children museums here in in Germany as well, What's working like? with this with this topic. There's um, for example uh, in Donau Eschingen here in Germany is a, a museum that is working on cradle to cradle, and um, we will have with with our congress uh, in in January we will have a children congress um, right at yeah. the same time in the same building as well, so everyone can come together with their families and the children can go to the children congress and uh, their parents can uh, come to our congress and so uh, yeah actually i think you're totally right and it's really important to um start with education uh, in a children's level and that's also why we are working on um, materials for schools and for um yeah young young adults as well Yes, demonstrations. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Linda, for joining and asking that question. And I do think, yeah, it's very exciting that you offer this uh, in a way, both so that people with kids can come easily to the conference, but also so that they're not just parked somewhere, but that they actually yeah. can participate in their very own way. Absolutely. I think that's very empowering. I find that it's a great example of what everybody should do. Uh, phenomenal and um, also great to see that there's more activities happening uh, with kids in other places at the museum you mentioned in Donau Eschingen and um, maybe maybe we can see more of that of course long term it would be great also becoming more part of the curriculum in schools yeah. um, I mean we, we have such an opportunity in the, in the public school system but of course the curricula are very like uh, lagging behind on a lot of things, but yes. maybe with a more attention to that, maybe we get then slowly in that direction. Yeah, that's uh, totally true. And um, I mean, there are some school books and there are also some uh, school initiatives that are already working with Cradle to Cradle. But uh, I think for that, we also need a different uh, school. Yeah, we need different schools and we need also different curricula and we, Cradle to Cradle is not something that you can put only into one subject. It's you have to implement it everywhere. And so I also think we need our future generations to have a totally different um, yeah, look on on our planet and our Earth. And, and it makes no sense to do this in only subjects like we do it right now. But we need to more cross the subjects and show that these all these subjects are interconnected and interdependent and it's not something that you can yeah go uh, only with one subject yeah that's very uh you know of course we we all want to have different school systems but now this becomes really um, very important to yeah. not only address cradle to cradle questions but a lot of other aspects is more integrated learning. I think, um, do, you, do you have any schools where you pilot such ideas or where you want to pilot them maybe? Um, yes, yeah, we, are, we are working with uh, some schools and here, here in Germany as well. Um, and we want to uh, yeah, work on actually changing these whole ideas on subjects and having more yeah yeah now everyone is talking about fridays for future but maybe we need some free days for future where they actually these students uh, like uh, in school can actually um yeah figure out how these things are connected and work on projects on um how to actually yeah, implement these ideas and students they have so many ideas and we're only yeah, like these adults are always thinking, okay, we now, now, what what actually uh, you have to learn? But I think they can learn a lot uh, by actually doing it themselves and actually showing also the, the adults a lot how the future could look like. Hey, wonderful, that's great <laughs> closing words. Nora, one final question came um, from Jim Tucker, whether you will share the slides with us, is that okay for you? 
Yes, I can do that, of course. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> and then, of course, we'll have a recording of the webinar and the slides later on. So watch this. You can watch this on our YouTube channel or on our website on pocasito.org. Nora, thank you very much. You have a great evening in Berlin. Everybody else, wherever you are, have a great <laughs> rest of your day. And I hope to be in touch soon again, maybe with another webinar or another conference. Maybe we see each other in Berlin at the end of January. Thank you, yes. Nora. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Everybody. And let's bye have bye. a positive footprint together. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Nora. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.